Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to show you guys how to do a gimbal hyperlapse, a little tutorial using the Zion Crane 2 right there. And then we're gonna use a remote and we're gonna use some ND filters. Now, I've seen a couple different YouTubers do this gimbal hyperlapse and it was lacking some motion blur because the shutter speed was too high. So I have an idea on how I wanna do it. So we're gonna see if this is going to work. Um, shout out to Maddie Hapoya and Evan Ramp. I seen you guys try this out and the, the hyperlapse looked dope. It's just not your typical hyperlapse. So I wanna see if we could do something even a little bit different. And I showed a sneak peek of one gimbal hyperlapse I did. And a lot of you guys were asking me how. So today is the tutorial. I'm sorry if you guys are hearing a plane above me, but uh, we're gonna try to get this going. So we'll see what happens. All right, guys, so the piers behind me, there's some pro volleyball tournament. This is my boy, Chris. He's gonna be helping me out today. And um, yeah, I'm filming on the R3. We're gonna use the A7 III because for hyperlapse photos, I don't want this big file coming from this R3. That would take me forever to edit and take up so much space. So what we're going to do is, like I said, use an ND filter. This is an SLR Magic for my G Master right here. And it's a variable ND filter. This one's really good. Cut out the light, make it nice and dark by turning this knob right here. I'll link it in the description below. And what I love about this is there's no color casting and there's no, um, there's a slight vignette, but that's, that's okay, that's okay. The next thing we have is this cheap remote. I'll link this also. It's like $17. This is what you're going to need if your camera does not have an automatic time-lapse mode. So right here we have the remote plugged in on the side and we have the ND filter on the front and we have the crane balance that's actually turned on right now. So I'm gonna try different modes. For the first mode, we're gonna use the lock mode, which is the L. And as you notice, I'm rotating right now and it's not going anywhere. It's staying completely straight. So what that is going to do is keep us perfectly straight. Now we'll see how this works. The next mode I'm going to try is the pan follow mode. Now the pan follow mode is going to move. So I'm curious to see if this is going to be steady or not, if the hyperlapse is going to be shaky. And then the last mode I'm going to try is the pan follow, the, the follow mode, which is going to follow up because we're going to walk on the pier and I want to get the Ruby's pier. And as I'm approaching the pier, I do want to tilt the gimbal up and see if we can time the shot with the movement so we don't get motion blur on the actual Ruby sign, but everything else is nice and smooth. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to walk. I'm gonna keep this in my pocket. I'm gonna hit start and it's gonna take a picture every two seconds. And then I'm just gonna walk like this. Elbows tight and nice and slow. And we're at F18, manual focus guys. We're gonna manually focus on the pier. So we're gonna go all the way, we're gonna punch in with the focus magnifier, and we're just gonna do manual focus, F18, this way we have a fifth of a second shutter speed, and everything's gonna be good, and I'm crossing my fingers that we get some dope footage, so let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, and now for the settings. My shutter speed was set to half a second, so I had proper motion blur while the center focal point stayed in focus. To achieve this shutter speed during the day, the ND filter was a must, cutting a bunch of light and allowed me to shoot at f18. Your f-stop will vary depending on the lighting situation and ND filter strength. Remember that guys. Use whatever will allow you to be at half a second shutter speed. Next, I set my ISO to 100. Another important setting is manually setting your white balance. I didn't do this for my first hyperlapse and as you could see in the footage, it changed halfway through. For the next two hyperlapses, I made sure to put on sunny because it was a sunny day at the time that I was shooting. So depending on your weather conditions, make sure your white balance is set to manual. All right guys, so for my first example, you're seeing me use follow mode. And what I made sure to do is as I approached the Ruby sign between the two second camera intervals, I started to slightly raise the gimbal. This way you get that panning up effect. And if you could time it perfectly, you will get a nice sharp image. And I love the way that this came out. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And also if you'll be trying this out.
Now for the next example, this is pan follow mode. And also once again, keep your hands steady. Don't turn the camera whatsoever and you will get a great result. I love the way this came out also, besides the dead bug that decided to land on my lens. Okay, so the last mode I'm showing you guys is lock mode and I was very disappointed with this mode. My camera seemed to be drifting off to the right even though the gimbal is supposed to be locked forward. A couple of you guys on the Facebook group said to check the calibration and go into the app. So I'm gonna play around with this because this made the most sense to get the most steady motion moving forward without any adjustments. But yet, as you guys could see, out of the three different modes I used, this one had the most trying to correct it. So make sure you try all different modes out, have fun with it, and let me know in the comments below if you guys are gonna try this out. Okay guys, so that wraps up today's video on how to do a hyperlapse. For my next video, we'll be diving into Adobe Premiere and I'll be showing you step-by-step -step how to edit your hyperlapses and add any stabilizing features so your footage is nice and smooth. In the comments below, let me know if you're gonna use this on client videos or travel films. I think it adds a nice little cutscene to some cool transitions and you could do a lot with it. And it, it, it's, it takes no time to do these compared to your traditional way of hyperlapses. The last thing I want to do is announce the winner for the Zion Tech Monitor. So we're gonna dive in onto my computer and draw a winner in about a couple minutes. The only other thing I want to say is thank you guys so much for your support lately. I know I'm a small channel, but I'm working really hard at dropping two to three educational videos a week. You guys could always comment on my Instagram page, send me DMs if you have any questions about these tutorials, or if there's any videos you wanna see me make, let me know in the comments below or on Instagram. So let's dive into here and then I'll catch up with you guys next week on the editing tutorial. Okay, so we're gonna draw the winner right now. Let's get this going. I'm gonna click right here. And we have a winner, Delay delineator at gmail.com congratulations bro hit me up on instagram and i'll get this out to you right away until next time guys peace out